we can cut this bit out, but the, what came into my head was pretty dark about my business idea. Do you remember Milk Tray, the chocolates? Yes. Yeah. So I thought of a, a chocolate box called Natural Selection, where one of the chocolates would effectively kill you. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't know which one. Well, I mean, it, it would kill off the fatties like me straight away because I'd just eat the whole box. <laughs> Welcome to the open source, everybody. Tom and I are joined today by Rich Saddington. Hi, guys. Thanks for thanks for having me on today. I've got a topic that I think is um, I think we've all probably got opinions of. So we're going to talk a bit about product based organisations and, and how they how they how they work. We'll probably get a little bit confused, and we'll hopefully get some sense at the end of it. There's always confusion on this show, so um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And then I think before we get into that topic, though, we're going to talk about this week's news. So the news this week is Oppo announces 125 watt tech that charges phones in 20 minutes. I'm certainly very excited about this, but do you guys walk around with dead batteries? Is this just a marketeer thing that we're less organized? Oppo is also an ice cream, a low calorie ice cream company. <laughs> I thought they've taken a bit of a tangent. There's an anxiety that builds up when, you're, when your phone starts to go that low in battery, isn't there? You know Particularly I mean? if I'm like in the middle of a working day and maybe I'm out at an event. Do you remember those when we went to actual physical oh, yeah, things face yeah. to face? I think it sounds useful. I think um, there's many times you know you're going to be leaving the house in half an hour and you plug your phone in and you might get from 17% to 34%. If you could do it, you know, in the 20 minutes you could get to 100%, you'd probably leave it even later. And five minutes before you leave the house, you'd, you'd plug your phone in and try and charge it up. Well, and also if they can do it for a phone... What else can they do it for? Like, is this the same technology that's going to solve the uh, the charge your car faster problem? Right. So the second piece of news, or the next piece of news today, is that Google Chrome update has limited the impact of cookie tracking and blocks annoying notifications, or so. And Gadget tell us we've been all kindly informed of the death of the cookie for a long time and how do we continue to market in a personalized way not creepy way we never market in a creepy way i don't quite understand how this will work how can a browser not accept cookies from from a website in order to provide functionality that that user needs to to perform a particular service yeah i'd like to see them define annoying a bit more in terms of what is an annoying notification and how, I mean, people have said that I'm an annoying notification. <laughs> I'd like to see. I'd like to see how how they how they uh, interpret that and how they can automate that because surely that's quite subjective. They may compile a centralised annoy list, and if your service gets onto the annoy list, your you know your cookies are, are blocked. So that must be known as the James Lawson list then <laughs> internally at Google. This brings a self-pronounced annoying notification, James. This is a brilliant segue onto our topic for today. So, uh, so then the news article really here is the pros and cons of service-based and product-based businesses. I guess the key difference is that you know a product is a, a product-based company or a product is something that every customer has the same thing, and you sell it to multiple customers, but each customer has the same experience with the same set of maybe variables that can be changed but essentially it's the same thing that every every customer receives normally on a sort of subscription basis a service would be an intangible so essentially it's some consultancy or or of a, a website build that's a project you know it's actually we'll deliver something over that period and it's got a defined sort of start and finish date and we're, we're providing something to give to benefit you for a a period of time yeah, and I think we've seen a lot of evolution, particularly in the kind of household consumer market of those service type offerings coming up, right? I mean, if you go back five years, you could probably identify the only services that you buy for your household as literally being your utility services, right? Um, whereas now everyone's got a Netflix subscription. Even arguably your car is turning into a service now. You pay a lease yeah. fee. You don't own the vehicle outright and that sort of thing, right? Um so there's, there's almost this service-based revolution going on in how we consume all of these different products from people. 
you know, even down to sort of the uh, Amazon subscribe and save where, you know, you can order your, you know, consumables and have them just deliver it on a monthly, on a monthly cycle. That's physical products wrapped up and sold as a, as an ongoing service. If I was going to launch a, uh, a product based company, it still kind of ended up falling into that service category, if you know what I mean. One of the business ideas I had was um, pizza cabs. So bear with me. <laughs> so pizza cabs is you would jump in a cab and they would have a little pizza hot plate at the back and you could just help yourself to pizza on the way home after a night out or maybe for lunch, maybe you haven't got time. And I thought, well, that's the product is there because maybe that's the pizza or whatever, but actually that's a service as well, you know? By the way, don't, don't paint on that idea. I, it reminds me of one of my early business ideas that never really, never really took off, and that was um, cabioke. <laughs> the idea of cabioke is you're with your mates, you're, you're going out on a night out, you get in your cab, the microphones come out, the glitter ball drops down, the lights go on, and you get to sing your way to wherever to your destination with your with your favorite with your favorite songs, and then you do the same thing on the way home five hours later. Believe it or not, I used to manage a, t- a team that looked after a, an Acquia hosted website a long time ago, and they were all based in Austin. And so I used to go over to Austin in Texas about once every five or six weeks. And so there was a local company set up talking about founding companies, right? Perfect story here, and they made their own Uber. And they encouraged all of their drivers to have something unique. And so we're called for a ride Austin to come and pick us up. And there was, you know, there's a bunch of us. So I asked for a, a XL, right? The, the large type car. And so this massive, you know, American four by four big, I don't even know what it was, pulled up. We get in. <laughs> And I kid you not, there was a disco ball in the middle of the ceiling with lights. And it was it was like walking into some sort of, you know, 70s oh. bar. He genuinely had a TV screen mounted on the back of the passenger headrest with the karaoke limit lyrics. And you got to choose your song, put the disco ball on. And as you were going into, into town that night for a few beers, you could sing karaoke in the back of the cab. So, Rich, your dreams have come true. It exists. You just have to go to Austin for it. That's it. <laughs> a little bit of a divert. I'm sorry. So, um, so let's talk about the pros and cons of these different types of businesses then. So I guess one of, those key, one of the key differences that, you know, product com- product-based company takes a lot more investment to get off the ground, but will start to return more revenue once it is running. Service-based company can get up, up you know, off the ground quicker, but then how it, how it scales is is more about people than than sort of you know the product i guess would you say a product based company are more mandible in the way they can change direction or or deal with change when you're when you're selling a service each time you're selling it you're selling what what the marketplace is asking for so you're iterating and improving and changing and adapting that service depending on what your customers want and need at that time with a product I guess there's a challenge with staying in contact with your customers because they buy that thing, they use that thing. And you, need, you need to have that ongoing conversation with them to make sure that that thing is still delivering what they need. And if your product isn't aligned with your customer base, your product becomes irrelevant, people stop using it, and all of a sudden you've built something that nobody, that nobody use, needs anymore or you know, there's a competitor that, that's, that's overtaken you kind of thing. So I guess there's two different approaches there to how you how you talk to your customers and how you funnel their needs back into your into your product roadmap and how you decide what you know which direction your your product is going to go it almost seems like the the graying of the lines between a product based company and a service based company is actually happening because of that very factor isn't it it's it's almost like people are turning products into services in order that they can maintain a consistent relationship with their customer and, and, and arguably try and sell to them over a longer period of time? Service-based companies. So if we look at someone, you know, someone like, like Netflix, who's probably a really good example of that, they're providing a you know, subscription service. They will use a product methodology within their, within their organization in terms of you know, having a product roadmap and the way they develop with probably in, in using agile methodologies in sprints and deciding, you know, what what features are going to be added to the product, which they deliver as a service. So the two, the two things are, are blurry, um, but essentially, you know, within an organization, a service would be considered as a product or even multiple products. 
one of the things I don't know if you two agree is that the service industry seems to be quite high risk as well because the entry point for the customer means so much in terms of how they may stick to that service. I think the risk is mitigated by you know, a typical service is, is low cost, but many, many users. An interesting one I, I use is, um, is Strava, who provide a, a freemium offer, which is a really good service. Strava is essentially a fitness tracking app uh, and GPS tracking system, yeah. I guess, as well. So it maps your runs, rides, hikes. Walk to the pub. But if you want additional features, you need to pay more for those. And they kind of tease you with some of these features in the freemium and make you start relying on them. And then, they, and then they take them away. They're reporting on everyone's usage and seeing trends. So if they notice that you're using a particular feature, they can start to target you with, with you know, the other benefits of that, of that feature that you might not be aware of and really encourage you down that, down that sales funnel. One service I found interesting and um, is off the back of a product, which was the Peloton you know, the, the, the bike in which you, you subscribe to a service to do spin classes or journeys. Yeah. And one of the things that I found really interesting about that was it was bringing, again, it was doing what Netflix had done so well, bringing anything that can be done outside into the home and make it seem as much like the real thing as possible. The, the service element of that is pretty smart because it means that everyone's getting a kind of tailored individual experience. You can mm. pick people to race against within your age group or category. And I thought that's smart because as a service provider, they could take that to so many other different places and they could use that data. Have you seen that they've recently launched their kind of coaching element of their product as a standalone subscription? So even if you don't have a Peloton device, one of their treadmills or their spin bike, um, you can now on your smartphone subscribe to just the service to go to uh, running classes or uh, weight-based uh, training without you know, the need for, for the initial you know, chunky investment. I think Peloton's one of those great examples of product meat service, isn't it? Where they, they had a bike and just selling an individual bike to somebody would have been that one-time transaction and there wouldn't have been any ongoing conversation whereas because they wrapped the service around it too now you're part of the community you're part of the feel and so they're now opening up their community for a small 9.99 monthly fee to anybody else who wants to be part of it that maybe can't even afford the bike so i think really clever product strategy there so maybe maybe as a final part here we could we could try and come up with a business idea we've heard we've heard from james about his his pizza cab where you get to eat pizza in the back of a taxi which quite frankly the first thing i thought of was food hygiene and and all, i mean it just it, it sounded quite disgusting no offense not, 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 not really. i was much more on board with rich's um karaoke cab Cab uh, karaoke thank you thank you so our business together it doesn't need to be taxi themed i'm just saying that but but what would our business be what's that pain point that we've all got that we need to fix uh, so this is back to the sort of fitness exercise strava type type thing so there's you know, these fitness apps we're giving them data about our um uh, our activity and if we're doing a lot of bike rides we're doing a lot of running we've got products that are going to wear out so you know there's a recommendation that most running shoes you're only supposed to run a certain distance in before you um before you replace them so an add-on service to something like Strava or one of those you know, fitness tracking things is actually the, you know, these reminders say, actually, your, your new shoes are great. You've done 500 miles in them. You need to start thinking about the next pair of, pair of shoes and actually starting to remind people that actually now's about the time you need to start buying um, a new pair of shoes. What if we created an, the next step on from that, Rich, where we linked not only a fitness tracking app but to a subscription service where – you paid a single monthly fee and you were delivered a standard set of equipment uh, that was refreshed at certain time intervals automatically. So when your forks went on your bike, for example, you were automatically sent a new bike. Maybe that's the answer for nearly everything that we have at home, like a design obsolescence subscription. Yeah. Hinges on the doors, anything. Just have, have, have that kind of monitored on your phone. You need to repaint all your skirting boards. Here's some paint and a 
and a paintbrush. And for an extra £299, here's a man to come and paint them for you. <laughs> I think we've solved it. Right there. We will no longer own anything down to the every single screw in our house, and we will just pay a <laughs> fee to Jeff Bezos to host our live for us. <laughs> so thanks for thanks for coming on, Rich. Cool, and thank you very much for having me. I've had a, um, I've had a hoot. Well, absolutely, and also I'd, I'd say thanks for putting up with us. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, all you're really doing is teaching Tom and I. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a free enablement session. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, yeah. mate. Cheers, guys. Cup and out.